As a young man from Michigan, my next guest always had a love for cash and making money. Fast forward through studying finance and accounting in his college years, he also picked up the Spanish language along the way. Moving on to holding top finance positions for multi-billion dollar corporations, this corporate go-getter shares his story like a movie that just keeps getting better. This is Bob Manza and you're watching Driven. All right, so when I first met you, I was really curious as to what your story was because <laughs> I remember you know, we were doing volunteering together, of course, uh, with SCORE, an organization, you know, national organization. Yeah. And you had got up, and I remember, I believe, was it Detroit, Michigan? Yeah, Detroit. That's yeah. correct. Okay, so from Detroit, and then one thing that really caught my attention was went to Mexico and became a CFO for Pepsi and then went to another country, and I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. How does this happen? <laughs> so this was obviously earlier this year, 2019, but I already had this show brewing in my, uh, in, it was in my scope already. And I said, that guy, I want to get on the show. So of course we kept in contact, became friends. Absolutely. And now you're here on the show. So <laughs> because this show is all about entrepreneurs and uh, corporate go-getters, you are basically a corporate go-getter. Um, and that's a story I want to find out about today. Um, and just some initial highlights that I wanted to, just so the viewers can actually know. Sure. Um, Kendall Award winner, which is a, pretty much a prestigious award within the Pepsi organization itself. Uh, top CFOs in Mexico. Uh, top 50 Innovator in Mexico Award as well. Uh, Frito-Lay Division VP, Grupo HEP board mm -hmm. member. Correct. And CFO for Pepsi Canada and Mexico. So how did it all start and what got you into the <laughs> finance world coming out of Detroit, Michigan to begin with? Right. Well, I think that com starts with my, my father. Okay. Um, he worked for Ford. Okay. And that's why we were living in Ford. I'm one of eight kids. Yeah, so yeah. I got a pretty big family wow. and I'm number seven. All boy and girls mix or? One daughter, Oh my seven goodness. sons. Wow. Yeah. I know, wow. my poor mother. But anyway, see, so I started in, um, I was born in Chicago, actually, and okay. then we moved to Detroit for my father to start working at Ford. Mm. And he was a uh, vice president of Ford. Oh, wow. And coincidentally, my father-in-law was a chief designer at Pontiac for uh. GM. <laughs> so we had a little thing going there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when I met my wife. But um, so I grew up and went to an all Catholic boys high school. Okay. And there is where I started taking Spanish. Hmm. You know, and I really liked. But strictly my high school, no, no junior high, just in high school. Just in high school. Okay. Yeah. And um, I had a really good teacher there, and that's one of the things I think I found out throughout my whole career is, you know, you kind of latch on to certain people. Yeah. And they yeah. kind of guide you and take you along, right? Somewhat of a mentor, I guess you could say. Yeah. Or, okay. And he was really a sharp guy. Yeah. Very interested. He was very interested in his own business world and that sort of thing, and. Um, and I, I've always had like my paper route when I was, yeah, yeah. you know, a little kid. Yeah. And the thing I liked about that is, you know, my mother actually bought the papers, so I take the money. <laughs> so from made her, it look like you made more right? sales. Like and then I would sell and collect the cash, and all of a sudden my mom would be going, "Hey, what, what happened to the money?" Oh, <laughs> I was I like, see. "Okay, here you go, mom. Here's a couple dollars, <laughs> you know, but you got to keep buying the papers for me." Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in Michigan, that was tough because in the winters and all yeah, that sort of thing, right? Yeah, it's too cold to be. Uh, so anyway, so I moved along, got through my high school, and then I went to the University of Michigan. Okay. And I got into business administration. First mm -hmm. two years were, you know, kind of general studies. Yeah. Or maybe um, trying to figure out also trying to what you're... figure out a little bit. But I always was orientated towards business. Okay. Always like money. Always yeah. like cash. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I loved having my own bank account. And so that was kind of what, what I um, got into. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Unfortunately, during that time also, uh, my dad got really sick. Oh, my. And my dad uh, passed away when I was a sophomore in wow. college. Okay. So that was very tough. Yeah, um, yeah. Had to work through 
okay, how are we going to pay for, for college now? Because, you know, we were all of eight kids. Yeah, you know, I was about was to say. What was that, by the way, what was the age groups that your mother was, was left with, with, with all the children? Um, we were, you know, I was number seven. Okay. So my younger brother was three years, he's three years younger. So he okay. was probably like 16. Okay. 17 when my dad passed away. So everyone else was already kind of Everybody's out on their out, own. Everyone's out, out of okay. the house and kind of on their own. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, and I always, I had trips set up that I always wanted to go to Spain, wanted yeah. to go to Europe. Um, no one else in my family had really ventured out like that. I thought it would be kind of fun to go do that for some reason. My mother always said I had this like wander lust. Yeah. And, you and there know, was no travel velocity and hot wire. No, back in those no, days. no, no, absolutely so, not. Totally different. Yeah. This is pre internet, I'm assuming, yeah. correct? Yeah, yeah. And so during the business school, what I, uh, I noticed that you know, I got into accounting okay. and finance. And with accounting, there were, you know, some firms mm -hmm. that had these great international programs. Okay. And there were two of them. So one of them was Price Waterhouse. Mm -hmm. The other one was Arthur Anderson, if you remember from the Enron fame. Yeah, yeah, okay. right, yeah, yeah. Luckily, I chose Price Waterhouse and started working for Price Waterhouse. Good choice. And worked for five years mm -hmm. in Detroit, um, basically small businesses to pretty large businesses that I worked on um, yeah. there in Detroit. And typically, you know, after five years, you get up, you can actually move at okay. that point, right? But, but what was, let me ask you this though, what was the factor that drove you to them though? How did they make it more appealing for someone of your age to say, hey, I wanna go with these guys? Um, the international program that they okay. had was definitely a big attraction for me. Okay. Better so, than the other one, or they had one that the other one didn't They had have. the other one that actually was pretty darn good. Okay, I see. Um, but I liked the people at Price Waterhouse. I see, okay. And I kind of felt like I fit in better there. I see what you're saying. Yeah, okay. and so I felt like they had a better practice actually in yeah. Detroit, and I could start out learning more there, okay. knowing that down the road I would do an international um, yeah. program with them. Yeah. And so... So I always wanted to go to Spain. Mm -hmm. um, I had been taking Spanish. I continued taking Spanish lessons mm -hmm. in college. In right? college, I went over to Spain and realized I never had really spoken Spanish, oh, let alone Castilian. Castilian. Type, yeah, I was about to say that's totally. I didn't understand part. anything. There. Wow. So the month of August when I went over there, as you know, there there's not a lot of people working. A lot of people are on vacation in mm -hmm. Europe. And so um, I took that whole month basically to take, go in depth and back into Spanish wow. and, and try to learn how to kind of get going. But then September, here I am, I'm the only American um, English speaker. Uh, there was one Canadian partner there, only American in an office, about 600 people. Yeah, yeah. And well, so what year, by the way, was this more or less? This was, um, let's see, that would have been like 89. Okay. I was there from 89 to 92. Okay. And, um, you know, so I picked up a whole bunch of clients like immediately. Yeah, yeah. Um, and was just thrown right into the pool. Wow. <laughs> so it was interesting. You know, I, I, it took me probably twice as long to do things I normally was able to do when I was working in Detroit. Yeah. Just because of the language barrier. Language barrier. Trying to learn the technical language as well. When That's you're in the no university, thing. you're in classes, you don't learn the technical business language. Exactly. Right? And I went to school in Mexico for a short period. And, you know, obviously speaking Spanish, you're like, yeah, I kind of got this down. And I was, oh, wait a second. There's a technical term for that? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, people don't say this phrase? Oh, people say it like this? So I can totally understand, even if you know Spanish, now going to a different version or variation of Spanish totally threw you off, yeah. I can imagine. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and then, you know, it was a time of a lot of change. A lot of good things were happening for Spain okay. at that time. Yeah. If you remember, that was kind of like when Spain was getting the Olympic bid. Okay. Um, they also had the World's Fair. Okay. Um, and also early really 90s. the early time for the, um, you know, the unit, unity of the of Europe okay. coming together. Yeah, yeah. Um, never had, you know, that had just started. So there were new regulations, a lot of financial regulations mm -hmm. that you had to learn and, and be able to implement with your, with your um, clients and that sort of thing. Yeah. So. But did you see, let me ask you a question though, because obviously you came back over here, went to another country. Uh -huh. When you were in Spain, did you see kind of 
kind of sketchy operations or was it kind of like stay away from it or, or like regular business dealings? Because I've lived in Mexico <laughs> and me personally, I saw a bunch of like kind of weird stuff happening. If you get what I'm saying. Yeah, I can understand so, what you're saying. So it's kind of like just stay away from it. Even if you did see it, just eh. There really wasn't in Spain because a lot of the, the clients I had okay. were U.S. I big see. things like you banks. JP oh, okay. Morgan. So they played had, a little bit cleaner. I there, had, so. um, you know, a lot of American, like subsidiaries. Yeah. And yeah. so the, I was not the principal on the audits. They were pretty much, you yeah. know, that was based in the U.S. And I was it's like black and them. white kind yeah. of. Yeah. I see what you're saying. A little okay. bit different. Yeah. 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 And um, so there, I met this partner. Okay. Um, from New York, mm -hmm. and I, I had a number of my clients with him, and he said, uh, "Hey." Bob, how would you like to come to New York practice instead of going back to Detroit after you finished my three years there? Okay. And so today, his name is Ed Bastian. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you heard that name before. It sounds familiar. When He's you the said. CEO of Delta Airlines. Oh, okay. So Ed called me up, had me come into the New York office. He was a partner there. And probably, I think I was there probably three, maybe six months. Okay. Didn't know anybody else in the office, in this massive office, you can imagine. Yeah, you yeah. Know, it was a principal office in, in the U.S. Um, Ed says, hey, you know what? I'm, I'm leaving the firm. Just want to let you know. I'm like, you got to be kidding Thanks for me. coming, but I'm gone. <laughs> yeah. Like, wow. So he left. I had some really cool clients, though. And yeah, yeah. You, would, you would like these. So I had MTV. Oh, cool. I had um, a lot of the big um, entertainment firms that mm -hmm. are based in New York. Yeah. Um, a lot of the, um, God, there's a whole bunch was, of different. Viacom was yeah, one of my co yeah. clients. Um, Sony Pictures was wow. one of my clients. So it was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. Got invited to a lot of different things. Cool events, That were really cool and events and all that sort of thing. But then he left. So, um, and then he was gone for about a, a year. I was there about a year and a half longer. Okay. And one day I get another call, and it's from Ed again. Mm. Hey, I went to work at Pepsi. Yeah. And, um, you know, I'm looking for a guy who can speak Spanish, who can be assistant controller for me for, for Latin America. Okay. So how would you like to come work for Pepsi? Yeah. Well, at the time, I'm sitting there thinking, I was kind of 10 years into my career. Mm -hmm. I, you have to decide at that point, typically, are you going to stay the long term with that type of firm yeah. and become a partner? Okay. Or do you say, okay, I'm not going to become partner and I really jump should ship and go jump do ship and start else. doing something else. I see. And so it was tough for me because I really liked what I was doing with Pricewaterhouse, a okay. great firm. But the problem is switching offices too yeah. many times. I didn't have the political backing, if you will. Uh, I, see, I yeah, didn't yeah. feel comfortable enough with that. Well, well, nowadays, it's funny you're saying that because nowadays it seems like, and I'm not going to say millennials, like everyone says millennials, but <laughs> what I see is people literally work at one job for two or three years, and they're already planning their exit to go somewhere else. So, you know, you look at the 15-year span of somebody, and they have five or six jobs, but back in that time, the early 90s, yeah. late 80s, <clears throat> you're pretty much, I don't want to say you're married to a certain organization, but you're there for a good period you're of time. You're getting there a pretty long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but nowadays, was, totally different, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think the, I don't know if it's still the same. It okay. might be the same with the accounting firms, I think. Oh, okay. I think Where they might firms, still stick to firms, it. And, that sort of thing. If you want to be a partner in one of those big firms. Okay. You can't be jumping around too many times. Yeah, because then it—I don't because, want to say it, they blackball you, but they kind of look at it yeah. like a negative type of. And also, you know, the, again, it's—it's it's a. At the end of the day, it ends up being a political. Yeah. No. Event because you're buying into the firm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you're becoming. You can't just go buy like you can do stock. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, you got to qualify, and then you got to put significant money down. And then to you want to bounce out firm. in three years or two right. years, and then yeah. Yeah. No loyalty, we'll call it. So I don't know how much it's changed. It'll be interesting okay. to find out. Um, so, so he calls me up, and the reason why I ended up doing it, I was commuting from Connecticut every day. I had two little kids at that time, okay. and um, I wasn't seeing them, basically. And, um, so, and then Pepsi put on a big show about, hey, you know, we're going we're gonna to move you. PepsiCo owns Frito-Lay. Yeah. Um, so you got Frito-Lay. Quaker as well or no? Frito-Lay, Quaker. 
Okay. And also the Pepsi business, as you know, right? With the okay, Cola yeah. Wars and all that yeah, kind of yep. stuff, mm -hmm. right? So um, I was going to work on Frito-Lay on the international part of Frito-Lay. Okay. So, which is the food part, mm -hmm. actually, at PepsiCo. So um, they said, hey, come on down. You're, we're we're going to move you to Plano, Texas. I'm like, all right. Thanks. And, you know, we didn't know we're from Michigan, right? Yeah, we're yeah. from Michigan. You know, come on down, bring your wife, take a look at houses. So we come down here and we're like, oh, my God, I cannot believe the cost of living, how great it is in Texas. Uh, you know, look at the house you can buy, this, all this stuff compared to Connecticut, all uh, this kind yeah. of stuff, right? So we're, get, we're all ready. We're, we move down and then the HR guys call me in. They say, hey, Bob, you know what? Um, you know, why don't you hold off a little bit on buying uh, a house? You know, and I'm, I'm this young guy. I think I was probably like 30 at that point or something. This is probably right? mid-90s by this point? Yeah. Okay. We're starting to get there, like 93, 94. Okay. Why, don't, why don't you hold on a little bit? Don't buy a house yet. You guys should get familiar with the whole area, that mm. kind of thing. So why don't you rent to start out with, the right? Apartment or house or Nothing whatever. really connected here. No, I'm just work, work, work. You're going to do your job, do the yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Right? And so I'm doing my job, and then, you know, three months later what happens, hey, we decided we're going to move this Frito-Lay International organization up to New York, merge it with the Pepsi International organization, oh my. and you get to go back to Connecticut and live up there if you want, you know? So how long were you actually in Plano? In Plano for like... Six months maybe? Or? Six to nine months. Okay. okay. Yeah. So I go running home to tell my wife, hey, great news, because she really liked living in Connecticut. You know, we, we're going to go yeah, to yeah. Connecticut and do that. Well, she didn't take it quite as I expected. Really? She was not happy. And the kids were, were uh, still, uh, grade school, right? Like still, young? yeah, still very young. Okay. Yeah, and just getting into grade school and stuff I see. like that. So um, she's like, hey, I, you know, we just went through this whole move. You know, you promised me I'm going to be able to buy this great house. I'm going to be able to do all this stuff. Jeez. Now you're now you're sending me back back up there. No promotion, you know, or anything. It's just like kind of like a lateral move, I guess. Right? Yeah, and it's basically they ended up. I mean, I was actually one of the lucky ones because they ended up letting go a whole bunch of people yeah, to combine yeah. these groups together. Wow. So I had to go to this hotel room in, in Dallas, mm -hmm. and the CFO was running the shop. So really? you walked into this room, and it was a huge ballroom, and there's two chairs okay. sitting there facing each other. And you walk over, and he's sitting there, and he's got all these papers you know, in a, in a file, and he's looking, and he pulls out the paper. Okay, Bob, take a seat. But have you met him prior to oh, this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. I'd worked with him and stuff, okay. and, so he's, and he's the one who hired me. Oh, well, okay. you know, well, plus the other guy, yeah, yeah, Bastion, yeah. right? So he... He sits me down and he said, well, I got good news for you. You have a job. The bad news is you're going to have to move back to Jeez. the New York area. So, okay, good. So we made it through that, moved up there. We were up there for another, like, year and a half. Okay. And a position opened up in Mexico mm -hmm. at a company called Gamesa, which yep. is owned by Pepsi. And oh, you know, I, I didn't know that. It's a big cookie company, yeah, yeah in Monterey. Know. Right? Yeah. In Monterrey, I should that, say. That's where I was born. And a lot of people there don't know you. that, but I was born well, in yeah. Monterrey, Mexico. Okay, yeah. that's great. Yeah. And uh, so we moved there in 95. We okay. were there from 95 to like 98. Mm. And um, it was a great experience. Yeah. Fantastic experience. But it was a little bit scary because now I'm thrown back into immediately back into the Spanish world. And yep. it, now it's a different Spanish. <laughs> You know, and different throws a wrench in your whole different day. Different technical it? terms, all that sort of thing. But um, I probably learned more from that job, I think, than than any other job. Okay. Just because all of a sudden I went from managing like smaller teams, mm -hmm. two or three people. I go down there and I had started out with about six hundred people in the control wow. group for that company. So, well, let me ask you this: so when you got that position. Was it something that they came to you for because you were kind of already internationally experienced, we'll say? Yeah. Or did you go, hey, I want this job? And was it kind of like you branded yourself to be the Spanish speaker of? Yeah, that I kind of okay. did. So they, okay. they were, um, you know, I was traveling all around Latin America at the time as in my controller position, yeah. right? And so then they said, okay, we need to get somebody down there. The, the Pepsi had bought... Gamesa in 89, 90. Okay. So it had only been in the fold, let's say, for five years. Yeah. 
and basically it never made money for the five years. Uh, I see. Okay, if you remember uh, from your youth, right? Yeah, yeah. It was owned by the Santos family. Remember the? I, sounds, remember familiar, them? sounds sounds familiar. Okay. Big family in that in that region. Um, senators. Oh wow. Came from that family. All that. Yeah, I'm sure sort of my thing. mother. You know, I'm sure my mother knows uh, and the stories. They right? were vertically integrated. A whole bunch of different things. Um, yeah, because Marinella was another. Was something totally. No, that's, that's, Bimbo, Marinella, yeah, no, 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 and Gamesa. All yeah, all <laughs> Bimbo is not part of. Don't talk about those. No, no, I'm saying they're, they're totally different companies. That's correct. Yeah, totally yeah. different company. That's right. So Pepsi only owns. Well, currently still owns Gamesa as well. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, Gamesa. It's the only cookie company really that. PepsiCo owns around the world. I see. Okay. Still, even to this day, I think. Wow. So it's pretty interesting. Yeah, um, yeah. And so it was a fun time because, okay, we had to restructure the company. Okay. Right? We had to put in a lot of systems, which we had never put in before, mm -hmm. invested in systems. So we went with Oracle systems at that point mm -hmm. in time. Um, I had great CFOs that I worked for. Yeah. Um, that just really helped me in my career and how, how yeah, to, yeah. to manage through this and do it do it quickly because the company really needed us to do things fast. Yeah. We had to cut costs and do that sort of thing to be and, able to get the profitability up. And, and during all this time, during this, let's say from the 89 to 95-ish we're at now maybe? 95 90, to 97. To 97, let's say. So during those years, did you have a specific, uh, an internal or let's not want to say internal, but did you have a mentor that you went to because of course you know your father had passed away and someone that was more like a father figure like a corporate father figure or was it kind of just whoever you happen to meet along the way or well of course they still had kind of ed was out there yeah um as a sponsor yeah. definitely and how much older uh, was he from you by the way i'm sorry um i want to say he's probably four or five years older oh maybe. okay okay yeah i think so yeah um, but really the local, the local CFO who okay. was there and the CEO were the ones that really kind of took me under took my wing, wing yeah. and really helped me. One was, um, a guy who was American who was okay. there. Um, and another one was a local Mexican CFO Yeah, and he was excellent and I really learned a lot from him. I His see. name was okay. Hernan Salinas. I don't know. If, you ever heard Carlos of the Salinas, Salinas family <laughs> there? Yeah, not that Salinas okay, family. No, okay, okay. <laughs> so he, uh, he was great. He really helped sponsor me. And, um, and then I moved back to Dallas. Okay. Okay. And I became the CFO of Latin America at that point. But based out of Dallas. Based out of Dallas, okay. which was Was that a move that you wanted or they kind of said, by the way, you're going yeah, to... Yeah, typically you're there... Pepsi likes to have you there for like two or three years. At least that's the way it was at that point in time. I see. To touch the ground. Yeah. So you got to be there for three years. Then we're going to bring you back. I see. And then if you want to go do something else that later, we'll talk to you later about it. I but see what you're saying. But it was kind of like those kind of um, tours of duty, if you want to call yeah. it. Yeah. So they brought me back um, and I became the CFO of Latin America. And again, worked with some incredible people there. One guy, uh, Rogelio Ribeiro. Okay. He's uh, uh, just an unbelievable um, go getter. Just kind go of getter. Um, again, another Mexican guy who was running Latin America, which is kind of interesting. Um, he he could have he could have run PepsiCo, I think, in by total. Himself. No, by I'm him. not by himself, but yeah. he could have got the role, the position. He yeah. was super driven. Yeah. Very difficult to work for. Wow. But you learned. Just a ton from him. He was on like business. the Mexican Steve Jobs. <laughs> oh my God, guy knew everything. You know, wow. he had grown up. He had taken Sabritas yeah, um, from like a five million dollar company to a uh, two hundred and fifty, three hundred million dollar company. Wow. Yeah. Did they have the time. conchas? No, it was a green bag. Or those are conchas, right? Yeah, but those. But are, who, are, who, who makes those? Ah, uh, conchas. I'm not too sure about conchas. Yeah, cause it, they look, it looks like a Frito-Lay, like a corn chip almost, but like with some grooves in it. And Sabritas, I think their logo has like the, the little man with yeah. the red right. cheeks or something, I think. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Yep. definitely. I try to stay away from snacks nowadays, but I remember, <laughs> I remember a bunch of stuff. Yeah, but go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah, so he was fantastic. And so as CFO, I worked with him. We, acquired, we started acquiring a lot of companies throughout Latin America. 
Okay. Okay. So within this, obviously within the same uh, commodity or yeah, really snack companies is what we were looking for. So we, we but who did you go for? Did was it like the up and coming, the startup types, or the ones that were already kind of moving and grooving? Typically, PepsiCo likes to do if they're going to do if we're going to do a startup, PepsiCo will do it themselves. We'll say we'll I go in. Okay, we're going to okay. take equipment from one country, move it to another. We'll start the business ourselves. I we'll see. call that like a greenfield. Greenfield startup, okay. Um, versus buying a, an existing business that happens to be doing well in the market, right? I see what you're saying. Okay. So, um, so we ended up buying about what, three companies in Argentina, mm -hmm. putting them all together: um, Chile, Venezuela, Dominican Republic. Wow. Um, probably forgetting a couple, Colombia, yeah, yeah, as well, and bringing these all in, and it was a very rapid yeah. kind of, um, hey, let's invest and let's, let's lock up Latin America for, for PepsiCo. I see. On the Frito-Lay side. I right? see. And at that point is where I met um, a mentor and uh, really a huge supporter um, was Indra Nui. Who, who was it? Indra Nui. Oh, Indra as a, as a female. Yeah. Okay. And she was head of strategy at the time, and also she ran the mergers and acquisitions part for PepsiCo. Okay. And she, um, you know, I'm, she, later on she became CEO, CFO of PepsiCo, and then okay. CEO, and she just retired. Wow. I think she retired because I retired last year. Oh, okay. <laughs> so she's like, well, if he goes, I go. I'm going to go. Wow. But, so. you, but you paid your dues, I mean, because now we're in, you know, 2019. So realistically, how many years is it now? Uh, you see, a lot of years. A lot of definitely. years, like 34 years, wow. 35 years I worked, yeah. Yeah, so so definitely, yeah. Wow. So, you know, I kind of, um, so that job was a really interesting job. And then okay. probably doing something that wasn't too smart on my point. Mm. Um, I had all this going for me, a lot of great momentum, okay. um, a lot of good people working for me. I was working for great people. But at that point in time, is right around 2000, okay. is when the whole tech boom is going, right? Yep. And so what does everybody want to do? I want to go work for a tech company, Yeah. right? I want to go work for a dot-com. I want to work for a dot. Well, I was a little bit more cautious being a finance guy. Yeah, yeah. I was like, okay, I, if, if you're not making a product, then I don't want to. There's nothing tangible I don't want, there. I yeah. got to have something yeah. I can put my hands on. So what I did is I, w I went to work for Gateway Computers, okay. and they had moved uh, their home office to San Diego. Okay. Well, that lasted two years, less than two years for wow. me. And I so just, you took the big leap of faith, huh? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> but at that point in time, I got a call from Frito-Lay. Okay. The president of, of Frito-Lay at the time was a Mexican guy, Al Brew. Okay. Called me up and said, hey, Bob, you know, our controller just retired, uh, or he didn't retire, actually, he left the company. He said, you you know, how would you them. like the job? And at that point in time, I was like, just inundated with all the stuff at Gateway. I was like, I'm going. I'm wow. getting out of this. That was a bad mistake. Um, and so I need, to, I need to move on. Uh. And so I moved back to Frito-Lay um, and worked for him and for um, a guy named Dave Rader, who's okay. fantastic. CFO, long-term PepsiCo guy. Yeah. Um, he, you know, supported me in a lot of different things. I moved over to support operations for a few years to learn the operations side of the business. Mm -hmm. um, Was it kind of awkward when you went back, like, kind of like a relationship you kind of bounced out on? And well, then it, back, was, or? it was kind of strange because I'd always worked on the international side. Okay. And then I get thrown into the domestic side where I didn't really know anybody. Oh, so it was okay. I only knew the president. I see. That was it, right? So it wasn't awkward going back into... Well, it was awkward. But, but not <laughs> like if it was like a group, you left, like, bye, and then you go back, and they're like, well, I, they all come crawling back. No, yeah, <laughs> it wasn't like that, but it oh, was... Okay, okay. But Frito-Lay is a really big domestic size, very different culture... I see. Okay. ...than the international side. And okay. so it's, a, it's just a different animal. Yeah. It's a much bigger company domestically, all that kind of stuff, yeah. right? So, um, so it was interesting, yeah, wow. it, kind of getting back into that and trying to learn more about what, how that, how that works. So I did yeah. that for like four or five years. Okay. And, and then you started Bitcoin, right? 
Then, yeah. So I'm going to ask you about Bitcoin in a bit and tell me what, what your thoughts are, but go ahead. Okay. Because you said something very interesting just a second ago, but we're going to wait on the Bitcoin thing, but go ahead. So then we moved. I moved to, um, you know, after four or five years of kind of doing pretty much the same thing, I was yeah. like, come on, guys, I need, to, I need to do something different. Need some fresh air. Now my daughters were getting into high school. One okay. had actually graduated went to Vanderbilt, second yeah. one was getting close to graduating. And um, so they moved me over to do, be CFO of the global IT group. Okay. So for PepsiCo, that's all, like, all the IT organization was all consolidated into one group. Mm -hmm. Based so, out of, well, what's Based out of Plano as well. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Right <laughs> Everything right there. So I didn't have to move or do anything, but I was now in this new job reporting yeah. to, directly to the CFO of PepsiCo, okay. who I'd known for, for a while, Hugh Johnson. Okay. Um, and it, you know, it worked out. It worked out well. I wasn't too excited being in that role, <laughs> as he would, he would laugh at me to say that because. Uh, but I did it. Did it yeah, for a yeah. couple of years. Learned a lot about technology, um, that sort of thing. Made a lot of big investments at that time. Yeah. And um, well, know, personally or Pepsi itself. Pepsi did. Oh, okay. A lot of investment in IT. Do you think now that it paid off for them, or were yeah, some of it kind of? Flops. No, I think it did. Okay. Yeah, I think, you know, anytime you're implementing a system, yeah. there's going to be people that like it, and there's going to be a lot of people that say, wait a second, you know, I was used to doing it this way. Yeah, I see what you're and saying. And now you're making me go do something different this way. Yeah, yeah. And I don't really understand what the benefit to me is, you know. Yeah, kind of they're, at, they're seeing it at the ground. And yeah. I was at Dell back in 99, 2000, yeah. around that time. So I saw a lot of changes also just literally within – a two, now I was at Dell for about two and a half, three years. Just in that period, I saw so much change. Really interesting. Really interesting. But yeah, but anyways, go, go ahead. Yeah. So now I'm kind of up to 2010, around okay. that. And my younger daughter graduates, and she started at SMU. Okay. And she wanted to live down there. She didn't want to live at home, which I don't blame her. Mm -hmm. um, and kind of get the whole college experience. Yeah, yeah. And so my wife and I are now in this big house. We're kind of, kind of semi-empty nesters. Yeah. Um, so you only had two kids, right? Yeah. Okay. And so the CFO of PepsiCo calls me up, say, hey, Bob, I need you uh, to go to Canada. How would you like to go to Canada? And I said, well, what's the, what's the role? You're going to be CFO of the beverage business, which I never really worked on the beverage side before. Okay. I said, fantastic. Let me see if I can sell it to my wife. <laughs> so The ultimate sale, right? There. You know, my wife... She's a saint. I mean, she moved, you know, 14, 15 times with me. Yeah. Um, she always supported me. If I didn't have that support, never would have been able to. So she's like the super ride or die. Huh? Right. That's good. So, hey, it's a promotion. It's going to be great. Let's go. You know, let's go do this. Great. Okay. So we go to Canada, um, which actually worked out well because, you know, Toronto's fairly close to Detroit. Oh, okay. At that point in time, my mother, at that point, she was 89. Okay. She was very sick mm -hmm. so we were there when she passed everything away went well basically. yeah so we were able to see her i think you know it's kind of an interesting thing thinking back how those, that stuff works out sometimes i see yeah and um so we were we were there for toronto but i wasn't there very long it was only there about two years uh -oh. um, but we love toronto yeah. love living up there and uh, that's when they just said hey we'd like you now to go back to mexico <laughs> So now it's 2012, 2013. You now, yeah, 2013. We're gonna we're gonna send you to Mexico, okay. and um, you're gonna be CFO of the the whole group down in Mexico, which was Sabritas, Gamesa, and the Quaker business. Okay, was this Mexico City or Monterey? Mexico City. Okay. Yeah. So moved to Mexico City. Get that Spanish going. again. Now at this point in time, I hadn't used my Spanish in like 15 years. Yeah, right? I was about to say. Really yeah. used it. So, and within the first week, it's like, hey, Bob, you know what? You're going to have to make this presentation because we're, we're rolling Jeez. out our objectives. We're going we're gonna to go to six different cities around Mexico to generate the people because there's 40,000 employees down in Mexico okay. for PepsiCo in this company. So we have to get people aligned yeah, yeah. to the objectives. Here's what we're going to do, blah, blah, blah. Okay, great. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to, pass out in front of these guys and all spanish hold on all spanish all correct? spanish 100 percent. wow yeah 
And um, so I struggled through it, you know. Okay. They had a teleprompter for me for a lot of it. Translator and, and everything. And, and you know, and I had to write up my own script and then show it to my boss. Nah, How long was the presentation, that, by the know? way? It was only like maybe 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. But was it, my did it feel like time. it was four hours? <laughs> oh, my gosh. And, and, you know, I had to go city to city to city. By the time I got to the sixth city, which is Mexico City. You kind of had it down already. Biggest right? group. There was probably like 2,000 people wow. invited there. Okay, I have it down, but now I'm presenting to all this huge group. You so know? you went on a whole, like, I don't want to call it a comedy tour, but oh. you went on a... Not national tour of Mexico. National tour, with right your, uh, within a couple of weeks after getting down there. Wow. I mean, it was crazy. But, um, wow. but I love Mexico. It's a, yeah. it's a great place um, business-wise. The people are fantastic down mm. there. Um, super business acumen. Um, yeah. They, you know, we talked, you talked to them, brought up a little bit about, okay, maybe some things quite not, you know, definitely yeah. there. It's not... You know, obviously like that, yeah, a lot yeah. of analysis, a lot of, you know, movement um, in a company that size to be able to deliver the results that we did, yeah. which you mentioned the Kendall Award at the beginning. Mm -hmm. The way you get there is you have to have three years of excellent results. Yeah, and right? that's, by the way, that's, I think that, because I've heard of it outside of, you know, you talking about it, but it's like the biggest thing in Pepsi or? Yeah, it's okay. a big, for the business units, it's like the biggest thing, right? I see. okay. And the way it works is you're, you're, they have, you, the company qualifies for it. It's not like an individual I does see. it, right? Okay. So you have to have the results for three years in a row. Then you got to pick one person and send them to New York to present to the executive committee of, of PepsiCo. Okay. Okay. And typically they're going to pick a guy like you, man. They're going to okay. pick a marketing guy who's going to do the whiz-bang presentation, yeah, yeah, and we're yeah. going to do all this stuff, right? He knows how to sell it, basically. Yeah, yeah. or the CEO is going to go do it himself, Okay. right? So in, what happened is when I was there is that, hey, you know, the company had won this award a couple of years ago by the head of uh, marketing went down there okay. um, and did a great presentation. CEO had presented before. He was in his 60s. He's like, I'm not going to do this presentation again. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember one time talking to him saying, you know, if there's ever the opportunity, I would really like to try to do that. Yeah, yeah. You know, and he kind of looked at me kind of weird and, you know, because typically the finance people don't go do these things, yeah, right? Yeah, well, it's not a, it's not a sexy, <laughs> you know? sexy unit, we'll call it, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so sure enough, we qualify and they say, okay, you guys got to put in, who's the guy who's going to come represent Mexico? Okay. And, and he put my name in. But did so, you know, or you kind of no, knew? He put my name in first, and then he came and told me. You remember oh, we right. had that talk about two years ago, and you said that you wanted to do it? Well, now you're going to do it. I'm like, oh, my gosh. That's fun. Hours and hours and hours of presentation. You're, you feel, no. you know, you're representing 40,000 people. Um, you got to really make a great presentation. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you got to make this work. I had a horrible um, video that I showed and part of it yeah. that was part animation and part this stuff. That didn't work very well, but the rest of the presentation went great. And the results yeah. were so good. I mean, I couldn't lose. Yeah, so we yeah. ended up winning. Data speaks yeah. for itself, I guess you could say. Yeah. yeah. So it worked out wow. really well. So, so that now, was this like, was, this what, is we like two years ago. Okay. 2017. And, yeah. And then um, I actually, you know, I had a health issue in 2016, okay. and um, which kind of changed my Chip a little bit. I was okay. always thinking, no, I'm gonna, okay, what's going to be the next move after this one? Yeah, yeah. I want to be, you know, go back to, you know, running, go maybe go to Europe, be CFO, go to Asia. We're going to go do yeah, something yeah. different. Let's go do that. That was just you and your wife now, right? Yeah. The kids are yeah. yeah. The kids love visiting us and all that sort of thing. But, you know, they, okay, you guys got to be working, you know, because <laughs> <laughs> it's a little different when you don't live, they can't come home. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. You know, they got to, Either, okay, if you're going to come home, you're moving to Mexico and you're going to live in Mexico. Yeah, and they like, might not be feeling yeah, that vibe. I don't or, know if I really want to do that. Yeah, yeah. I want to stay here with my friends or, you know. Wherever city that they're at, yeah. So it's kind of interesting because I think that helped them, Okay. right, to be able to. Oh, I think all the moves, the experience for them was really good okay. because they learned how to fit in new groups. Yeah. Um, and they, they both have huge self-confidence. Yeah, it kind and, of forces somebody yeah. to... There's no option. You're stuck here. Make the best of it. Right. Kind of thing. And they did. And they both got, you Very know, they're good. both working. They both have great jobs right now. That's and good. So they're, yeah. they're doing well. And um, so 
I had that health issue and that really kind of changed things, kind of like made me start thinking more about, um, you know, obviously retirement, but also what am I going to do next? You know, do I yeah. want to keep doing the same thing I've been doing? Um, you know, we were fortunate enough that I had been at the company for so long now, yeah, yeah. like 25 years, mm -hmm. accumulate a lot of stock options, all that good stuff yeah. that keeps you working at the one company. They kind of keep you tied in with... Yeah. And um, so I said, you know, I think we got enough. Let's go, you know. Yeah. And my wife was really excited about moving back to the U.S., kind of being closer to her. Yeah. To her. We have two girls. And, was she and doing her own thing, thing working or was she? She couldn't work down okay. in Mexico, um, do that. She had her own business when we lived in Plano. Okay. Um, a party business. Really? Yeah. Hold on, like putting parties together or? Party, it's called Party Sensations. And okay. it was... You know, you call up on the phone and say, hey, I'd like to do a do um, you know, my daughter's eighth birthday. Okay. Um, SpongeBob. You know, I'd like to do a yeah, Disney party. Um, you know, she really likes, you know, Beauty and the Beast, right? Okay. Okay, so we'd have Belle show up at the party and uh, do I all see. these games. And, well, that's kind of cool. And who was Belle? It was our daughters <laughs> and their friends all participated in the business. Everyone gets a little something. Oh, right? yeah. They all so, get a little cash at the end of the day or whatever. So it is. was fun. And then she ended up, you know, selling that and we, That's and we cool. moved on. Yeah, when we moved. So. So, so now let me ask you, because we know we're almost towards the end now. Out of all the years that you've been, you know, we'll just say with Pepsi, because that's pretty much the majority of your life. Well, not just the majority of your life, but your professional life. Mm -hmm. What are some key takeaways now that you would give to now a 20-year-old, an 18-year-old, going into the workforce because obviously now times have changed to where yeah like i mentioned you look at someone's application now for something it's like wait a <laughs> second you were here for three years here for two years here for six months here for two years and it's quite common and a lot of major employers they know that's the normal now but not just with something like that but just the overall way to operate within a large organization what do you recommend or what are what are some uh, some nuggets that you give to to the younger ones now getting into the workforce? Yeah, I think it's um, to me. I'm OK with people you know, moving and doing all that yeah, thing yeah. as long as they capture a relevant um, expertise or and develop something within that short time frame while they're there. OK, okay. Yeah. not just. Um, okay, well, I worked there, and then you know, I didn't really like it there, so now I'm moving somewhere yeah. else. Just make sure that you're capturing something. And um, you know, I think if you, could, if you can find a mentor as you're moving in mm -hmm. to these different roles, would be ex it's extremely important. Okay. You, know, you learn, I think back in my career, if I didn't have that sponsorship, yeah. mentorship that people you could do, but the issue with that is mm -hmm. it kind of takes time to develop that, right? Yeah. Because it's, it, it's something you, you know, as you were talking, it's relationships. Yeah. It looks like your career has been built off of this relationship, this relationship. I mean, oh, the CFO called me, the CEO called me, the this. I'm like, that's literally just relationship building. Yeah, and that's a... Continuous you know, relationship building. And PepsiCo's a massive company, yeah. but... How many but worldwide I, employees, by the way? 350,000, I think, or maybe even more. Wow. And um, to have that relationship with key people like exactly. that is, you know, was extremely important for me, obviously. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, yeah. So I think, you know, that's part of it. You know, make sure that you're always kind of building your skill set. Mm -hmm. As if you're going to move around, that's great. But then make sure you're building those blocks, right? I see. Okay. Because, you know, to be able to move up, if you don't have a, the blocks to build up. Yeah. And then, you know, you're always going to be moving around at this level. Yeah. You're not going to be moving up. But did you strategically do it, or did it just organically happen? Oh, for me, um, like, were, were you? I got to get with this guy and get in good with this guy and become friends with this guy, or was it just your it, own personal character that just opened doors for you with key people? It was more the latter, I would say. Okay. I didn't specifically go. Okay, I got to go know. I I need to go know this yeah. guy. Or I got to know Ted. Or he needs to know me. You know. Um, I, you know, I always hated going to like the big meetings where we have all these people, you know, all these important people around and you're like going up trying to shake people's hands. <laughs> and, you know, yeah, yeah. It's just too forced for me. Yeah. I have to have a, a good, 
you know, one-on-one relationship. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was always people I was working for. Uh, I see what you're saying. Okay. So I was able to, you had a purpose to go talk to them yeah. and say, hey, I'm faced with this issue. What do you think? You know, can I, can I do this? You know, can I go try this out? You know, what do you think about that? Yeah, you're not one and, unit hitting up this guy from this unit. Yeah. And he's like, who's this guy? But you, you already have somewhat of a connection. Yeah, exactly. That's what you're saying. Just making it blossom. Make it, it was natural. I see. More natural okay. that way. Very good. Very good. Now, the last thing I want to ask you is this, because obviously you are a finance guy. Former CFO of Pepsi. Okay. My question is this, because I'm sure you have some very interesting thoughts on it, cryptocurrency. <laughs> uh, I personally don't buy Bitcoin or any of these golden coin or sparkle coin, whatever they're called. But what are your per personal thoughts on is it something that is here for now? It's total BS. It's actually something to put your money into. Oh, boy. From a, from a larger from a higher level eye like you, uh -huh. looking down on something like that, what are your thoughts on cryptocurrencies? I think it's still a little bit too early. Okay. I think eventually it makes a lot of sense. Okay. Okay. Because I think Facebook is trying to work on yeah, their own currency, I believe, to, right? Yeah, exactly. And maybe it's going to take somebody like a Facebook. I know some guys have been out there, they're already billionaires or whatever. Yeah, I don't yeah, know how yeah. exactly how they're doing it. <laughs> Um, but you know, personally, I've never invested in it. Yeah. And um, because it's just too, I think it's too volatile. Yeah. And right now, it's not really regulated either by I anybody. See. So because yeah, there's these hacks and like, yeah, a billion dollars magically disappears and nobody knows where it went to. Into and like you said earlier, there was you're a product guy. There was nothing in your hand with certain things. So you're kind of <laughs> like, and this is it's. A non-tangible item. It's like you can't touch it. You can't feel it. That's why I'm kind of curious. And um, yeah. So, so, but it, but eventually, you think it'll I be think, the norm, or yeah, I think eventually it'll start to be more. It's kind of like you know, okay, ten years. Well, maybe I don't know, ten, fifteen years ago, you didn't have PayPal. You didn't have a lot of these paying mm -hmm. services. Now you, now they're all there. That's true. I think things are going to keep evolving more electronically so okay. i think it's going to be it's going to evolve to something that'll be pretty interesting Very so good. the question is do you want to invest now or do you want to well, wait until it's too late do you want to buy on <laughs> malibu beach in 1922 yeah. or do you want to buy in malibu beach in 2018 or 2019 when do you want to buy yeah but no no it's it's very interesting i'm just curious because it's not something that i personally put any money into um because i'm you know like you were if there's a house i would rather invest into a house because I know that house is still going to be there more than likely in 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. But I'm at a weird age. I'm 40, so I'm not really old, old school, and I'm not really young, young. <laughs> so I'm kind of in between and very cautionary with everything I do. But, but no, it's good to hear that your thoughts, that you see that there is a future in it. But just I think the timing is, that's what you're trying to say, the timing just isn't right. Yeah. Very good. But any, so. any last thing you'd like to leave us with before we end it? No, I want to thank you. Thank you so much it, for inviting me to do talk. this. It, it, it was, was great. I hope I didn't go. No, 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 no. We're good because it's things like this that I love hearing people's stories. You know, because, you know, a good example, you look at somebody's LinkedIn, oh, I'm the CEO of this, the CFO of this, or whatever, whatever, whatever. But what got you there? What was your actual story? And you being, I don't want to say dragged, but moved from here to here to here to yeah. here to there to there. And your buddies now are big time CEOs. And because basically y'all came up together, you're friends. Yeah. And obviously you're delivering results too. Exactly. If you don't deliver yeah. results while you're doing that, then, which it kind of gets back to the point about yeah. the t how much time you can, you should be in a. Whether it's two years or three years yeah. or five, did you bring value to the organization? Yeah. And if you can demonstrate that, then you kind of built one of those blocks and then you can move yeah. on to the next thing. And, yeah. Well, very good, Bob Manza, once again. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks, Amit.